Every day, a powerful fusion of the elements is at work in Singapore. Sustaining life, history, and economy with water. Filling the earth with a zest to nourish its inhabitants. Fanning the fires of faith in a multiracial quest for enlightenment. And riding the winds of change and exhilarating adventure. In this universal cosmopolitan city, every man and woman calls Singapore. By many names has Singapore been called. A city of diverse cultures. Garden city. City of the arts. The fun city. One of the old brand names for Singapore is Instant Asia. And when you come to Singapore, you see the rest of Asia. You see modernity with tradition. Singapore is a wonderful place in the sense that it's unique. For having all these communities come together, Malays, the Indians, the Chinese, and the Eurasians. And the coming together creates a very special Singapore flavor. No matter how diverse the people are, one element is responsible for bringing them all together. Water. The waters of the Singapore River. Throughout history would connect these shores and introduce new life to the city. The story begins with Stanford Raffles, a British official of the East India Company. And when he found Singapore, he found that this was a wonderful place as a strategic trading port between China and India. Since then, Singapore has grown economically. The old harbor and uh, warehouse facilities used to be on this river. In 1832, it joined Penang and Malacca to form the government of the Strait Settlements, enjoying even greater development with the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869. In World War II, Japanese occupation of the city drove the people to extreme difficulties. The Crown Colony was put to test. After the war, the British realized when they came back that things had changed, that people wanted greater freedom and wanted greater change. And to their credit, they realized that it was time to move on. And they instituted political reforms, uh, which eventually led to independent Singapore. The real modernization and growth of Singapore came after independence. And uh, this was when our own people had our own elected officials, men like Lee Kuan Yew, our founding fathers, who laid the framework and blueprint for the industrialization of the country and the modernization of it. Changi Museum director Jia Thurai is a well-respected historian who credits the mindset of his people as a vital key to development. I think to a large extent, we had a gung-ho attitude that was important, but we also treasured the significance of stability and education. I was born in 1961, and, and from a young boy, I saw that transformation of a country from a third world state to rapid changes, and within a generation, we now live in a very modern state. 
and uh, it took a lot to achieve that, and it cost a lot. On the surface, Singapore is just like any other modern city in the West. Glittering lights, skyscrapers, multinational firms and first world industries. Beyond the facade of economic prowess, however, lies its true character. It is impossible to miss paradise. Tropical rainforests and themed nature parks. Landscape gardens and zoological sanctuaries. All within minutes of driving around the Garden City of Singapore. The 646 square kilometers of earth on which the island state sits poses the biggest land use challenge for the city's architects. This is the Urban Redevelopment Authority, or URA Center. The URA pursues excellence in urban design and development, including the preservation of historic buildings that provide a tangible link to the shared past of Singaporeans. And just as the world's leading cities recognize the importance of public spaces, so too does Singapore. In Singapore, we work very hard to promote, to brand our tourism product and we always invite foreign media to come to Singapore to do a, a, this a extensive coverage of Singapore tourism attractions. Kenneth Chow is a local tourist guide whose job has allowed him to regard the city with newfound perspective and pride. We had uh, this plan. We seriously look at uh, all these uh, old buildings at the uh, various uh, ethnic uh, area, like Chinatown, Little India, Arab, Arab Street, Katong area for the Pranakan. All these uh, old buildings, uh, they have a very unique uh, architectural style. All these buildings used to be warehouses, shop houses, retail, and right now we transform them into um, this uh, F&B, food and beverage, and nightclubs, pubs. Talking back to his Asian roots, his food, his traditions, even his superstitions. You know, uh, we may have big modern buildings, but a lot of the buildings are here on, along the river because it's good feng shui. And so we keep on to our roots despite the outer changes and physical changes that have taken place. And that's how we remain Singapore and, and who and what we are.
Undeniably, the fire that keeps Singapore burning from within is the many colors of its people's faith. Just like we are many races, you'll find in Singapore many religions also. You have Chinese syncretic beliefs like Taoism and Buddhism, which is the majority religion among the Chinese community. You have the growth of many Christian churches in Singapore. A large number of the Indians split between Hindus, Christians and Muslims, while the Malays are largely Muslims. In fact, there is even a street in Singapore where if you walk down the street, you'll find the places of worship of all these faiths on the same street. And the beauty of this country is it's never been a problem. It's an accepted part of life and today our children actually make it a point to visit many places of worship so that there is an appreciation and an understanding of each other's community and each other's faiths. In this city of diverse cultures, the Chinese population has by far the biggest percentage with 76.9%. The Malays represent 14%, while the Indians 7.7%. Eurasians and people of other descent cover a mere 1.4% of the population. For a long time, these communities used to be the standard communities of Singapore. But, you know, over the last 10, 15 years, we have seen such a level of globalization and modernization in this country. We now have not only that standard mixing today in Singapore, but you also have people from all over the world who have made it a point to migrate to Singapore, settle here. An interesting result of the intermingling of the Chinese, Malay and British races is the Peranakan culture. A visit to Singapore's eastern section brings us to the old Katong area, where Nelson Lee of the Katong Antique House graciously welcomes us. Basically, a lot of people confuse that, you know, we are cross mixed when our forefather from China arrived and married to the local inhabitants Malay, which they are not Muslim. Alright, so during the intermarriage, is it? But also with the influence of the Dutch, the British, and I should say the Thai, you know, the Indians and so on, this comes to a culture of called Pranakan. It's not just because intermarriage you are a Pranakan, it takes years, you know, of cross-breed culture, you know, influence before you become a Pranakan. The streets are lined with what seems like color-coded residential homes dating back to the city's early days. A most interesting feature of these homes is the peephole, a small hole located at the ceiling right above the doorstep of every house. While touring the Peranakan household of Katong, we chanced upon the first of our multi-racial gastronomic delights, the Katong Laksa. Indeed, the same fire that keeps the faith burning can also be found in the passionate flame that flavors every Singaporean dish. Just as delectable are the traditional salads found only in the Hawker's Food District. In Singapore, we have a very special Chinese salad we call rojak. Rojak is a Malay word means mix, mix. This is another very special Singaporean delicacy called popia. Okay, what we have is uh, egg, uh, peanut powder, and uh, this is very nutritious, very suitable for everyone. If there are must-see destinations, there is also a must-eat Singaporean breakfast delight everyone calls Kaya Toast. <laughs> 
Nothing elevates ordinary tradition into a pervading culture more effectively than the winds of change. In the fun city of Singapore, years of diligence, hard work and perseverance now amount to the same reward. A lifestyle of rewarding adventures and exhilarating entertainment. At night, the creatures of the dark come alive in the night safari adventure. For those who would rather take it slow, city museums abound in the area. while quaint boutiques, bargain sales, and specialty restaurants dot entertainment complexes, such as the Chimes and Suntec City. Claire Miranda is a Filipino performer and voice talent who has found a niche in the urban jungle of Singapore. From her, we caught a glimpse of the typical lifestyle of Singaporeans from the point of view of a new settler. I moved here because the family is here. Uh, my husband has a job here, so naturally we, fo we followed to join him. It was difficult at first because it's a big place, you know, and uh, get used to the lifestyle, it's very orderly. Um, plus the fact that I wasn't working initially. So now, now I do a little bit of freelance, and so it's, it's helped me get out there and meet new people and actually network with, uh, with media people and production people, which is, you know, what I love to do. Orchard Road is the premier avenue for shoppers of all types. In every nook and cranny, you find the latest and the best in clothing, fashion accessories, electronics, houseware, and food. For bargain and souvenir hunters, the ethnic quarters of Chinatown and Little India top the list of must-goes. So here we are at Zouk, which is the premier night spot here in Singapore and some say in Asia. It's gaining quite an uh, international uh, reputation with a lot of clubbers and a lot of DJs. And this is actually the place where a lot of international events happen. But this is not the only place to be seen in Singapore. There are bars and cafes along Mohammed Sultan Road. And if you want something a little more quiet, there's also Boat Key, which has wonderful restaurants. And uh, of course, uh, as you can see, this place is buzzing and it will be buzzing until around 5 o'clock this morning. So why don't we go check in and uh, see what else we can find inside. The meaning of Zurk uh, in French Caribbean means village party. Uh, we're practically made up of three big humongous warehouses right behind me. Uh, you can have a look, it's real big. There are practically three main outlets in Zurk. The main room itself, uh, Zurk. Uh, we have Velvet and we have Future. Future is uh, catered to a more R&B type crowd. Uh, a more, f a more uh, young and vibrant type of crowd, uh, the more hip hop, okay? And Zook itself is catered to the um, a younger crowd as well, but it's uh, people who love house music, okay? Um, we don't go too much for trance, but we believe a lot with ha and house music. Um, and Velvet is catered to a more mature crowd, the more grown up uh, movie stars, uh, important people uh, in, in the country. Uh, we can have uh, all the way from artists all the way to big businessmen. While it's been said that man is the fifth element to complete the universe, what truly keeps all elemental forces in total harmony is the character of the person within. 
governing all the elements of a diverse and multiracial society is today's Singaporean, with a passion for the culture and the arts. Today at the heart of the city is a conspicuous structure that reflects this growing awareness. The Esplanade. Carolyn Ted delights us with her passionate affair with the Esplanade. Our mission is to entertain, engage, educate, and inspire. Uh, so the programming template, we have, you know, we can do many, many things. Um, cornerstone of our pro programming template uh, are the festivals centered around the three key uh, festivals here in Singapore. Hari Raya for the Malay community, Deepavali for the Indian community, and Chinese New Year for the Chinese community. The hall is my personal favourite. As you can see, it's a lovely green and, and lots and lots of wood. The most noteworthy feature really is the fact that the concert hall is able to adjust to suit different music performances. The first feature is the acoustic canopy, which is this flying saucer object-like thing. And it can be raised or lowered, and what it does is, is it reflects sound to the musicians so that they can actually hear themselves. The second feature is these huge doors that you see here, all right, um, they lead to an outer chamber, what we call the reverberation chamber. There are in total 84 doors, and by opening these doors, you can increase the capacity of this hall by 60%, and thereby alter the reverberation time. Water. Earth. Wind, fire, man. A powerful fusion of the elements now taking place in Singapore. 